Okay, we're going to be looking at uh, Python GTK and threading today. Uh, we got a lot of type, a lot of typing to do uh, in the first half. Of this is going to be basic review of creating some basic windows, and then we're going to add threading to it. So let's get started. I'm going to create a script. I'll just call it GTK th for thread dot py. Start off our script with our shebang line, telling our operating system what interpreter to use, basically what type of script this is, and it's going to be a Python script. So we're telling it to use the Python environment. Next, we will import um, uh, py, gtk, and gtk. Now these are um, basically uh, just the modules that allow us to create uh, GUIs, our graphic user interface. So uh, next thing we're going to type, we're going to type py, gtk, dot require And then inside the parentheses, 2.0. Now that's not, you don't necessarily have to put that there. Basically that checks to make sure they have at least version 2 of uh, GTK. Uh, otherwise some features may not work if they're working with an older version. So the script would end there. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a class. And we'll just call it timer. And um, then we're going to create a uh, function. And the, we're going to create the initiate function. So just like so. And this will be the function that runs when you call the class timer. It will run whatever is inside this initiate function uh, by default. Um, and we are going to create a variable, self.x. And we'll set it equal to 0. And then we're going to tell it to run a function called dot win with a capital W. That's how I'm typing it. Just make sure you type it the same each time. Uh, since it's calling that function, we now have to create that function. So what we're going to do is we're going to type define def win self. And so we're creating this function that will be called by the initiation function. And we're going to create an object, a self win object. And we're going to set it, that object to equal a GTK window. So that's going to be our window object, GTK dot capital W win. It is case sensitive. Then we're going to say that win object, self win, we're going to connect a function to it and we're going to say when it is destroyed. So what that is saying is basically when you have a window open, this main window, when you click the X up on the toolbar, it will kill the script instead of just closing the window and the script keeps running. So when that is clicked, we are going to lambada. I really don't know what that means. I just know this is what I typed to make this happen. GTK.main quit. So we're calling the built-in function for GTK the main quit. So that will quit the script uh, when you click that X. So next, we need to start adding stuff into the window and making the window visible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new object. I'll just call it um, self.box1. And self.box1 is going to equal a gtk.hbox for horizontal box, capital H, capital B, lowercase ox. So we've created that object. Next, we're going to take our self win, which is our main window, and we're going to add to it that container, which is our self.box1. Now, the name box1 is a name that I'm giving it. You can give it pretty much any name you want. Um, so now we just have to say self.box1, and we're going to say dot show. That will make it visible. Of course our window is still invisible. We'll make the window visible here in a moment. It really doesn't matter where you do it. I usually do it towards the end, but you can do it at the beginning as well. Next we're going to create something to go inside that box. We're going to create a label. So we're going to create an object called self label. And we're going to set that equal to a GTK dot, oop, no space there, dot capital label. There we go. And we're going to, you can put a string in here for what the label is going to say. I'm going to use our variable of .x. So basically that label 
we'll say zero, because as of right now, x equals zero. Now we're going to take our self box one, and we are going to pack start. And as that's saying, is we're going to take our, whatever we put in here, which is going to be self dot label, and we're going to put it inside that box one. And then we're going to say self dot label dot show to make that label visible. Up until that point, it will be in the box, but it will be invisible. Um, now, let's create a button. We're going to say self dot button one. Once again, that button one portion is a name I'm giving it. You can give it pretty much any name you want. Uh, obviously, avoid spaces and special characters if you can. We're saying that that object is a GTK button, and it's going to have a label of start. Then we're going to take our self dot box one again, and we are going to pack start our self dot button one, and then we are going to take our self button one and show it so that it's visible. I'm typing things all wrong today. There we go. Next, we have to give that button some sort of function. So we're going to say uh, self.button1.connect. So we're connecting it to a function. And we're going to say when it's clicked. So when the button is clicked, what's going to happen? We're going to run a function called self.count. Now, we haven't created self.count yet and we will in a second, but right now if we ran this uh, nothing would show up because our main window is still invisible. So we're going to say self.win.show and that will make that window visible. Now let's create that um, function count and it's going to be passed two variables or two arguments. One self, so that's saying the window itself uh, and the widget that sent the signal, so in this case button, so that way we can grab information from the button, which we're not going to do in this case, but if we uh, needed to, we could. So now, let's type uh, while, we're going to make a while loop, and we're going to say while x is less than 5, what are we going to do? Well, oh, you know what, let's go back up here to the top. And since it's going to be a timer, we're going to add a module called time. And we're going to say time. So a time module, we're going to use the sleep function. And we're going to say one. So it will sleep for one second before it continues. Next, we're going to say self.x plus equals one. So each time it loops, it will wait a second, then take whatever x equals, which in this case it equals zero, and add one to it. And next time it loops, it will add one to it again. So it will become two, and then add two to that, three. And basically it will count up to five. Um, next, uh, we can do, what we're going to do is a self dot label. So the label we created earlier, and we're going to change the text. We're going to set the text equal to, right now uh, x is a variable, I'm sorry, x is a uh, integer, um, and so I'm going to turn it into a string for la the label. Not sure if I have to do that, but I'm going to. So basically it will update the text, so as x changes the label should change too. So you would think that the way this would work if you're looking at it, uh, that maybe every time it loops the label would change. Well, that doesn't really happen because we need to do some threading, which we will get to in a minute. But for now, since I know it's not going to work, to give us some output, I'm going to say print. And so this will print to the terminal screen the value of x, so we can see x as it changes. Uh, next, we are going to, outside of that class, we're going to create a, another function, and it's going to be our main function. This is one way of doing it. I think I've done it different ways in the past. But I'm going to say, whoops, define, and as you can see, it's not indented, so it's not part of that time class. Uh, we are going to create a function, and we're going to say it will run GTK main. So we'll take the GTK module and run the main window, and we're going to say if name equals 
main. We're now going to set our window object. We're creating a window object based on our class. So timer. So if we go back up here, you see our class is called timer right there. So we're creating an object that will run that function and that uh, window will become that timer, if that makes sense to you. I hope I'm explaining that well. And then we're going to run our function of main, which I think in the past, I don't think I have to create a function there. I think that I can just put GTK main down here, but one way or another, this should work. So now we'll save that. We'll make it executable by using change mod plus X and the name of our script. Then we'll dot slash the name of our script. I'll hit enter. Oops. Have a little, uh, oh, little typo there. That's fine. We'll go back in here. This should say GTK, no I there. Okay. So we're going to run that script. Oh, we got another error. Uh, probably just a typo somewhere. I, another typo. I wish you guys would speak up when I'm making mistakes like that. No, but D, uh, destroy. It helps if you spell things properly when you are programming. Otherwise, you'll probably get some errors. So let's go ahead and change that so that it's spelled properly, not D story. And, and now we'll save that and try to run it again. Okay, and it worked. It's out of your view right now. There it is. It's very small. We didn't give it any dimensions, so it goes to the minimal dimensions. But if we click Start, once again, you would think that this timer here, the label would start counting up but it's not going to. We'll get an output in the terminal here every second, but you notice our, our GUI actually locks up until it finishes that while loop and then it updates and zero, it goes from zero to five all of a sudden. And we'll run that again. And once again, bring it over here and I'll resize it. You'll notice once again, the entire GUI locks up. Like if we had other buttons and stuff, we could not click them. I don't even think we can close the window. Yeah, if we click close, it will wait till it hits five because it's stuck in that while loop. So this is where threading is going to save us. So let's go ahead and make a few changes to our script. Be sure to watch part two of this tutorial to figure out how threading can help us with this situation.